Okay. Uh, good morning, uh, my dear students, and uh, I think uh, this is the fifth session. And uh, in this session, uh, I'm going to discuss uh, uh, the code optimization techniques uh, that are applied uh, before the code generation and during the uh, code generation. Okay. So just to remind you, uh, I think uh, you all know that uh, the source program source program undergoes uh, 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 into a front end of a compiler. That is, it first, it undergoes into a lexical analysis where the lexical units are identified, okay? And then these lexical units are combined according to the grammatical structure and uh, uh, the syntactic, uh, 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 syntax errors are checked and uh, the program is uh, completely tested for whether the whole source statement is well formed or not. Okay, and then uh, after having uh, tested for uh, uh, syntax errors, uh, the semantic consistency is checked. Every statement has a proper meaning, whether semantically it is sound or not. So once uh, that is done, okay, then you will have an intermediate code generation. Okay, so the intermediate code is generated through the semantic actions that we uh, write as a part of uh, the notational framework, which is called as syntax directed uh, definitions. Okay, so uh, there are actually, uh, these are the uh, several intermediate codes that can be generated. You have abstract syntax tree, you have a directed acyclic graph, you also have three address code and you also have uh, a byte code. Okay, so this must be uh, given as an input to the uh, code generation phase. So code generation phase takes the intermediate code and uh, uh, generates the uh, uh, target code. Okay. Now here, when the target code is generated, okay, when the target code is generated, it, it is ensured that that target code must be an efficient uh, target code. Right? It has to be an optimal target code. So, in order to facilitate that, right, uh, the compiler has to uh, undergo, compiler has to uh, deploy uh, a code optimization phase uh, between uh, the front end of a compiler and uh, the code generation. So, some kind of an optimization is done, okay, and then the optimized, optimized code is given to code generation and then uh, finally a target code uh, is generated which is efficient okay, in terms of uh, uh, time and space. Okay, now uh, let me discuss uh, what are the different uh, uh, techniques that we can uh, employ uh, as a part of uh, code optimization, right? So let us first discuss uh, what is code optimization, how to measure the quality of the object program, what are the different uh, sources of optimization, and then in particular, I'm going to take uh, the loop optimization. What are the different activities that are involved in uh, loop optimization, right? So, uh, a code optimization technique uh, uh, is an important uh, activity uh, where uh, the sophisticated techniques are employed by the computer on the intermediate code representation in order to get the optimal object program, which is most obvious for a, a given uh, source program. Now here, remember one thing, you can, without the code optimization, you can generate the target code. Without the code uh, optimization, you can generate the target code. But the generated object code may not be an efficient one, right? So here, since the object code has to be an optimal one, you can generate n number of uh, object programs for a given source program. You can write an algorithm for code generation algorithm. Uh, and then you can generate n number of object programs for a given source program. So one object program may be better than other one. So our objective here is to generate the target code, which is of high quality. Okay, so here the quality is measured in terms of uh, time and space. Okay, <coughs> so the optimal program refers to efficient code uh, measured in terms of uh, time and uh, space, right? So here, we also assume that the target code that we are generating is not a machine language, it is a assembly level language. It is a assembly language and you know 
what are the advantages of uh, generating the assembly language okay instead of uh, the actual uh, binary language right so we shall assume that our target code is an assembly level language right so as i already told you uh, the quality of the program uh, is measured in terms of uh, time and space in, in, and it also depends on on the machine on which it, it is going to be executed okay so if we take the large machine okay if we take the large computer running time is very very important okay and if you take a small machine right uh, the space is very very important okay so whenever the ob object code is generated okay it it should be of high quality okay and uh, the quality is always in terms of uh, time and space okay if uh, the target machine is a, a large machine then uh, time is very very important so it has to the target program has to generate uh, should not take more time during the execution it should run faster and uh, in case of small computer memory is the constraint okay so when the object program and the target pro program is get executed it has to occupy a minimum space during the execution okay so these are the things that should be noted and the code generation algorithm is written right so quality of the program is measured in terms of uh, time and space okay now let us discuss uh, there are uh, different techniques as i already told you the compiler employs okay on the intermediate representation the intermediate representation is either abstract syntax tree dag tsc or uh, byte code right so here there are different sources where you can perform the optimizations okay some are related to machine they are called as machine dependent some are not related to machine they are called as machine independent optimization these are also called as local optimizations okay so there are six sources of optimization okay they are called as local optimization which are uh, which are machine independent optimization optimizations let us discuss those things first and then we shall go for uh, the code generation where some kind of an optimization which is machine dependent can be uh, performed right so uh, the first uh, possible source of optimization is uh, when the source program is uh, written by the programmer okay you have the sequence of three address codes that are generated by the syntax directed transition schemes okay so in the uh, in the uh, in the intermediate representation you have certain patterns okay which are uh, uh, you have to detect those patterns okay and replacing these patterns by an equivalent and more efficient uh, construct so you have to identify the pattern which is not efficient which is inefficient and then replace that pattern by an efficient uh, pattern for example uh, here uh, the multiplication operation may be replaced by an addition division operation may be replaced by a subtraction for example if you have you also have a square root okay if it is x square in the in an expression if the programmer uses x square then x square can be replaced by x into x okay so the pattern here is x square right it is now replaced by an efficient pattern which is called as x uh, x into x so the multiplication is faster than square root similarly you have if you have a multiplication so multiplication pattern can be replaced by an addition repeated addition okay and so on so these are this is the uh, first source of optimization where you have to detect the pattern okay in the program and replace this pattern by an efficient and equivalent pattern without changing the uh, meaning of uh, the statement okay so this is very very important the second source of optimization is uh, the efficient utilization of registers and instructions from the instruction set of the machine so you have uh, uh, a registers you also have the instructions in the instruction register so when the code is when the instruction is mapped to corresponding thread address code okay you have to make use of you have to effectively make use of registers and the instructions that are there in the instruction so here uh, this is closely related to machine so this is called as machine dependent optimization so in order to do this okay we will be maintaining uh, during code generation we will be maintaining uh, two descriptors uh, namely um, register descriptor and uh, uh, the um, address uh, descriptor 
okay so by referring these descriptors during the code generation uh, we can get the uh, available registers okay for storing the temporary values and also uh, there are some informations like liveness information of all the variables okay so these informations are stored in the symbol table okay according, according to the information symbol table okay some inform uh, some uh, variables are live okay uh, you can uh, refer to the corresponding address descriptor if the particular value is not available in the address descriptor okay uh, the particular value of a variable is not available is not there in the memory then if it is available in the register then the register content can be moved to address descriptor. So like this you can have the arrangement to keep track of uh, all the registers that are being used so this is the second uh, source of uh, uh, optimization third one is uh, very very important uh, okay so here uh, you can in the th in the sequence of three scores you can find out you can identify the common sub expressions and eliminate them so common sub expressions again it is not the uh, difficulty of the uh, programmer since he is focusing more on the logic so okay knowingly or unknowingly okay some common sub expressions are introduced in the uh, in the program okay so it is the job of the compiler to uh, find out those uh, sub expressions then uh, then uh, eliminate those sub expressions okay so this is another very very uh, important uh, source of optimization so here uh, uh, we will be using a dag okay we will be using a dag uh, to identify where are the common sub expressions then you can eliminate them okay so the kind of elimination kind of a common sub expression could be let us say uh, a of i plus 1 equal to b of i plus 1 so in this case i plus 1 is a then index i plus 1 for both the arrays a, a common sub expression so that is to be evaluated so it is done two times when when you are referring to content of uh, uh, the element of an array a and also when you are referring to uh, uh, element of an array b so i plus 1 is evaluated two number of so it is a sub expressions okay which is common to both a and b so uh, this has to be identified and it has to be replaced like this t equal to i plus 1 and then you can say a of t equal to b of t so that means you are going to save the time during the execution okay right since i plus 1 is not computed uh, since i plus 1 is computed only once naturally you are going to save the uh, time during the uh, execution right so you also have a equal to b into c x equal to b into c plus phi okay so here in temporary b into c is calculated some temporary then a of t1 so here instead of uh, computing b into c one thing which is already computed which is in some temporary so that is uh, replaced here that is placed here so you have t2 equal to t1 plus phi then x equal to t2 so here also uh, b into c is a, a common uh, sub expressions right so in the examination uh, you will be given a sequence of three address codes uh, and uh, uh, you will be asked to perform, uh, I will, you will be asked to identify the common sub expressions uh, and then eliminate them, right. So usually here, uh, when you are eliminating the, when you are identifying the common sub expressions, you have a term called as basic block. Okay, I will tell you later what is basic block. So this basic block is going to have a sequence of uh, uh, three address codes, okay. So the identification of common sub expression is done with respect to, to uh, the particular basic block okay and you also have uh, the liveness information of all the variables so by default all the temporaries are dead uh, once you execute these statements of a basic block and all the variables are live okay so this information is available in the symbol table so according to the information available in the symbol table okay uh, the instructions are modified, the, identify, uh, the uh, uh, sub expressions are identified and then uh, they can be eliminated. So this actually reduces the number of instructions that are being used in the uh, code generation. Okay. So let me take uh, an example, okay, how one can uh, uh, take the uh, sequence of three address codes pertaining to a particular basic block okay, and how DAG is represented and then uh, the common uh, uh, then how the uh, the common sub expressions are identified okay let us suppose uh, i have uh, example number 1 where i have uh, uh, four uh, three address code statements so this is this is pertaining to a particular uh, uh, basic block okay let us suppose i also have an information saying where b is not live on exit of the block 
means that B is temporary. The value of B is available or only when uh, the statements A, B, C, D are in execution. So once you exit from the basic block, okay, B is the value of B is no longer available. So it is a temporary. But however, all the other values A, C, D, okay, so they are live and these values must be retained so that maybe subsequently in the subsequent uh, uh, basic block the values may be used okay so in order to identify the common sub expressions what is that is done is uh, a dag is constructed here and you already know how dag is uh, constructed so directed uh, acyclic graph where uh, here a node in a uh, uh, graph can have more than one parent Okay, there is one additional information is added in an interior node. Okay, you are going to attach the set of identifiers. Okay, you are going to attach the set of identifiers and these set of identifiers are, uh, are going to hold the value associated with that operation. Okay, so let me take this uh, example and let me demonstrate uh, how uh, DAG can be uh, constructed uh, for these uh, four sequence of uh, uh, three address codes. Okay, so the information available is B is not live on exit the block. That means B is dead. The value is not available. Okay, so here uh, uh, initially uh, your DAG is empty. Okay, your uh, di directed A cycle graph is empty. Empty. So first you are going to check uh, the leaf node for B, which is not there, which is going to be uh, created, which is going to be uh, created. Okay, so let me indicate this as B0, a leaf node is created for B because it is not there. So I am going to write it as a B0. So B0 indicates that it is the initial value of B. Okay. Then maybe in the subsequent statements, the value of B may be, <coughs> B may be updated. Okay. But here, let me indicate just for our clarification, B0 is the initial value of B. B0 is the initial value of B. Okay. Then you are going to uh, check the leaf node for C. Okay, which is not there. So uh, you are going to create the leaf node for C0. I'm going to write C0 again. This is going to indicate the initial value of, uh, of C. Then you are going to check the interior node with label plus. Okay, left as A, uh, left as B and right as C, which is not there. Okay, so B and C are the initial values. So the node is not there in the DAG. Okay, let me uh, create that. So you are going to have the uh, interior node as plus right left is b0 right is c0 okay now here still further modification to the DAC construction the interior node has a set of identifiers attached so later you will come to know why you, you are at, attaching the identifiers for the interior nodes okay since the value of this operation is going to be uh, stored in variable a i am going to attach an identifier a to the interior node plus so this identifier a the variable a is going to hold the value of operation plus okay so this is what is my <coughs> that that is what is created my first statement okay next statement is b equal to a minus t so you are going to check uh, the node for b so you may have when you are checking for node for a either it could be a leaf node or it could be an identifier okay attached to some interior node Okay, now as you can see here, as you can see here, you are first, uh, for the second uh, statement, you are going to check for A. So here, for A, there is no leaf node, but however, the A is an identifier attached to the interior node plus. Okay, I am not going to create a node for A. Similarly, for D, I am going to check for a leaf node, whether, it, whether there is a leaf node or whether it could be a, an identifier attached to the interior node. So here, nothing is there so i'm going to create a leaf node for d okay so since it is the first value i'm going to write it as d0 okay next i'm going to check the interior node as minus okay left as a right as b such a node is not there so i'm going to create it so minus left is a right is d okay and the interior node uh, is uh, minus and here you are going to write b so this b is an identifier attached to minus which is going to hold the value of that particular operation right next is c equal to b plus c next is, next is c equal to b plus c now uh, here you are checking for 
the existence of uh, a node for B. It could be a leaf node or it could be a, an identifier uh, attached to uh, interior node, right? So here uh, B, you have uh, an identifier attached to the interior node minus, so no node is created, right? And you also have a leaf node for C, the initial value of C, which is here. Okay, so no leaf node is created for C. And then you are going to check for plus, okay, where the uh, right, uh, uh, where the left node as B and right node as C0. So such a node is not there. B0 is there, but the value of B is updated. So such a node is not there. So node is created for plus, okay, node is create, created for plus. So left is B and right is C0. Okay, and to this I am going to attach uh, the identifier C which is going to hold the value of uh, plus, right? And then this is the third statement and this is what is how the DAG is constructed. Next, D equal to A minus D. <laughs> now, you are going to check for leaf node for A or an identifier attached to interior node, okay? So, you already have A attached, okay? You already have A uh, as an identifier attached to minus uh, so, no node is created. Similarly, for D, okay, you should have D0, which is already there, which is already uh, there, that is D. Then, uh, do you have uh, an interior node uh, minus, okay, uh, uh, with uh, interior node as minus and left as A or right as D, so which is also there, that is this, okay. So, for this minus, in uh, the left is A and uh, right is D, which is already there, so no interior node is created. But here, uh, you are going to attach uh, uh, the uh, D because when this fourth uh, 3 address code is executed, uh, A minus D, the value of A minus D is being stored in D. Okay, now here, you are, you are going to just append, earlier B is going to hold the value of A minus D, now you are going to uh, attach D, so D is going to hold the value of uh, 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 A minus D, right? So like this, a DAG is uh, constructed for the sequence of three address codes pertaining to a particular basic block. Okay, now see here, uh, after having constructed a DAG for the sequence of three address codes, you have to identify where are the common subjects. Just analyze, just uh, find out any interior node, okay, which has a, a, a set of identifiers attached. If there is only one identifier that is attached, it means that there are no common sub-expressions. But however, if you have more than one uh, identifiers attached to a particular interior node, you have a set of identifiers attached to a particular interior node, then there you have the existence of a common sub-expressions, right? So as you can see here in the diagram, you have a B and D as two set of identifiers attached to an interior node minus, right? So, you have a common sub-expressions as A equal to, or sorry, B equal to, B equal to A minus D, B equal to A minus D is the common sub-expression, okay? So, this has to be eliminated. So, before you eliminate, you just find out what information is available with the symbol table. So, we have uh, variable B is not live on the exit, that means, the value of B is no longer available once you exit from the black. Okay, rest all variables are live. Okay, so here I am going to uh, retain the value of A which is equal to B plus C, A equal to uh, B plus C. I am going to write A equal to B plus C. Since uh, B and D, even C is also live. Okay, C is also live that I am going to write. Now here B is not live, but however D is live. Okay, so here you can uh, have a choice between B and D, whether to retain B or whether to retain D. But if you know that from the symbol table, B is not on the after uh, exit from the block. Okay, so what you can do here, you can uh, retain D, you can eliminate B, right? So thereby you are going to eliminate uh, the common sub-expressions uh, B equal to A minus D, right? So uh, I am going to write D equal to A minus D as my uh, only one statement because A minus D is a, a common uh, sub-expression. I am going to eliminate uh, the common sub-expression which is being evaluated in B because B is no longer available after exit. It is a temporary, okay. Next C is of course is live, so I am going to write C equal to 
b plus c c equal to b plus c right so this is how sorry uh, uh, small mistake i have done okay uh, a plus b is written now i am going to write uh, d equal to b minus uh, c sorry a minus d d equal to uh, a minus d and we know that b is not like okay so but the value of b is being used in uh, in uh, computation of c so now the statement c can be written as d plus okay d plus c okay so d plus c so this is what is why i have taken d because d is live b both b and d have a common sub expression which is uh, uh, a minus c but i am going to eliminate b equal to a minus c because b is not live so i am going to retain d so wherever there is a b i am going to write d okay so my c computation is c equal to d plus c so this is what is my sequence of uh, uh, the three address codes okay after eliminating the uh, common sub expression so here earlier there were four uh, three address code statement now there is uh, sorry four three address code statements and now you have uh, three uh, there are uh, three address codes naturally the instructions that are being generated is less okay you are going to optimize the uh, instructions that are being generated okay so this is the one uh, uh, source of uh, uh, sorry this is the second third source of uh, the optimization where you can identify the common sub expressions and then eliminate them right so i have taken one example uh, similarly you can take uh, uh, the uh, second example and uh, try at home okay so the information is given you have these four set of uh, uh, statements okay a is live on exit of the basic block first instance uh, you find out uh, the uh, common sub expressions when a is live in the second instance okay find out the three address codes uh, 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 common sub expressions when a b uh, c are live okay then find out the uh, final sequence of three address codes after eliminating the uh, common sub expressions okay so take this as homework okay next is uh, compile time computation this is also called as a constant uh, folding okay as i already told you um, when the source program is written it is not the uh, programmer's fault uh, he may write uh, uh, certain expressions where some value of the sum value of some variables are available at compilation time okay and using that value sometimes you also have a, a statement written okay where the computation is done for a particular uh, variable and the values are available at compilation time if that is the case right so don't postpone that computation to uh, uh, execution time the reason is okay uh, execution is done uh, more than once whereas compilation is done only once okay so when you know the values during the compilation time evaluate them so this is going to reduce the time Hmm? during the uh, 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 execution okay now let us see uh, what are the uh, examples right so this is also called as constant folding uh, folding so i have i equal to i plus 1 and i equal to 3 and a equal to 4 into i so i have these three set of uh, statements so this is what is my ir representation intermediate representation that is sequence of three i am going to evaluate t1 equal to i plus 1 i equal to t1 i equal to 3 t2 equal to 4 into i now here as you can see the computation of uh, uh, the value for temporary t2 okay which is to be evaluated at 4 into i and the value of i is already known understood the value of i is already known during the compilation itself <coughs> so don't postpone this computation to execution run time okay so what you can do is i can replace the value of uh, i3 i okay as 3 here and then i will compute t2 so t2 will become Uh, sorry uh, i equal to 3 i equal to 3 uh, sorry t2 uh, okay t2 equal to 4 into i uh, t2 equal to uh, 12 and a equal to t2 right now here when the substitution is done when the computation is done at compilation time when you know the values okay uh, sometimes uh, you may ha also have uh, certain statements which are uh, dead statements okay you will get a scope for eliminating the dead statements for example see here this particular part is a dead statement understood because the value of uh, i is uh, changed 
it is computed here but here it is changed so these two values are redundant okay so these can be then later eliminated it is called as dead code right so like this uh, you can uh, perform the uh, uh, code optimization during the compilation when you know the uh, values uh, for a particular variable at compilation time and if the value is being used for certain computation okay so don't postpone the computation for uh, do, during run time just evaluate them okay and uh, 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 then uh, the you are going to save the time during the uh, code generation so this is the uh, fourth source of uh, uh, the optimization uh, fifth one is uh, uh, loop unrolling this is another very very important again it's not the programmer's mistake uh, knowingly or unknowingly okay he might have written a loop where uh, you have a constant uh, loop iterations right you have a constant uh, loop iterations and you have uh, a certain body is written to execute that body several number of times okay for example see here uh, i have this particular while loop uh, where which is going to be iterated 100 number of times the value of i equal to 1 as long as the value of i is less than 100 okay you are going to uh, change the array contains ith value of every uh, array x is initialized to 0 now here this is what is my body so in loop unrolling what i can do i can replicate the body and reduce the number of iterations okay if the iterations are constant i can replicate the body okay and then reduce the iteration so so here instead of 100 i can i can replicate this once okay i can replicate this once so i can write uh, it as 50 now i am going to replicate the body of the loop so x i equal to 0 i equal to i plus 1 is the body which is written two times now it is going to be operated uh, 50 times instead of 100 it is done 50 times okay so this is another very very uh, important uh, source of uh, optimization okay which is uh, uh, fifth one uh, next thing is uh, uh, copy propagation copy uh, code optimization by copy uh, propagation and uh, uh, of course uh, this is going to uh, expose uh, the uh, dead codes uh, after uh, uh, applying uh, copy propagation so here here uh, you have uh, an assignment statement of the form f equal to z the value of uh, f is calculated as z and uh, the value of uh, f is being used uh, somewhere in the remaining part of the uh, program so instead of computing f equal to z right so you can replace uh, wherever there is f you replace uh, z and eliminate the assignment uh, uh, expression f equal to z so this is what is called as the copy propagation okay wherever there is a reference to f okay you are going to replace this by g and you are avoiding this f equal to g assignment statement so this once once you do this okay uh, it may again expose uh, you will get or you will get an opportunity to uh, find out uh, the dead code even the common uh, sub expressions okay so before eliminating the common sub expressions before eliminating the dead code so this technique is applied because as it is going to expose uh, uh, the um, common sub expressions and also uh, the dead code for example see here uh, i have this, these three statements x equal to t1 a of t3 equal to t3 and a of t3 equal to x so x equal to t1 is my assignment statement of the form f equal to z so the value of x is being used here so what i can do okay i can substitute the value of t1 in in i can replace this t1 wherever there is x i can eliminate this so this is what is my uh, uh, statement okay so this is what is my uh, uh, statement and later i can eliminate this later i can eliminate this okay so our x equal to t1 is a dead code and could be eliminated understood after replacing x with the t1 this becomes dead code understood so it is eliminated example number two i have c equal to d and x equal to c plus c and z equal to d plus c right so here c equal to d d is an assignment statement and the value of d is being used uh, here okay the value of c is being used here okay so instead of uh, this assignment statement what i will do i will replace this c with d okay then c equal to d is dead code it is eliminated okay so when you replace it you are going to get this and you will have d plus e as the uh, common sub expressions okay and then later it can be identified and then eliminated 
okay so this is what is uh, uh, the sixth uh, optimization technique uh, which is uh, copy propagation right so here all these uh, f uh, except second rest all are local optimization they are also called as machine independent optimization whereas second one is machine dependent optimization okay uh, now after having discussed this uh, let me discuss uh, the loop optimization in uh, in detail according to a syllabus okay uh, there are uh, uh, there are some uh, optimization uh, that can be performed if your source program contains a loop okay you are going to reduce the uh, once uh, you optimize the loop okay you may reduce the uh, instruction that are used okay and the number of uh, iterations okay so this is what is the objective so as a part of loop optimization what you can do is you can uh, you can uh, perform three types of activities one is uh, code motion okay where you are going to identify loop invariant computations and you are you are going to eliminate them and uh, you also have the uh, the identification of uh, induction variables okay so the purpose of identifying induction variable and removing the induction variable is to uh, minimize the use of instructions that are uh, generated during the code generation okay and also the third activity is uh, uh, reduction instant where the um, costlier operation is replaced by a cheaper one so these three activities can be demonstrated on a, a loop okay let us suppose this is what is my piece of code okay uh, which i'll be using uh, for uh, loop optimization so this uh, example is used to handle the loops okay that removes the loop invariant computation and the induction variable and also the reduction in strength okay so here there are uh, two variable two uh, array variables a and b okay so their product is obtained and uh, you have a loop that loop is going to iterate uh, 20 number of times okay so before we proceed further we assume that uh, the machine uh, on which the particular code is get executed is uh, four byte uh, word length okay so four byte word length that is when you are referring uh, the array indexes uh, the data the array elements are spaced uh, uh, four bytes okay Uh, the difference between the offset between uh, two uh, array element is uh, four bytes okay so you have to properly index okay the uh, uh, array uh, using the particular variable and then take the uh, content of uh, a and b and then uh, uh, take the multiplication and store it in prod variable okay now this is uh, what is my example uh, now let us see uh, Uh, how one can perform uh, the loop optimization so before in the loop optimization we are going to perform uh, three tasks one is code motion and uh, second one is uh, uh, removing induction variable and then third one is uh, reduction instant so before we perform these three activities we have to find out where is the loop in the program okay so in order to do that okay uh, in order to do that uh, before uh we identify a loop uh, this entire uh, source program is converted into a sequence of uh, uh, three address code which are generated by an sdd okay so let us assume that these are the sequence of three address codes that are generated for that particular uh, uh, source statement so here uh, t1 is used as an index okay since it is multiple uh, since uh, the value of this is 4 into i okay so why 4 because the word length is 4 okay the array elements are Uh, placed uh, four bytes uh, 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 the distance between two uh, elements is four bytes okay so the index is calculated in some temporary t1 then this is what is the offset minus 4 because when you are referring the uh, first element okay when when you are referring the first element of an array okay uh, your offset must be if let us suppose if your array starts at 2000 okay then the offset must be uh, set as 1996 okay so here if you do that then later when you reference the particular array element you are going to add the index value for this okay to refer the particular element of an array okay so that's why okay so t2 equal to address of a minus 4 this is to have the offset for uh, the array element okay and then t2 t1 so t2 gives the offset and t1 gives the index which is computed as 4 into i okay then you are going to take the particular element in t3 similarly you are going to take for uh, okay address of b minus 
So again, you will have the offset for B, which is placed, again, you are subtracting with minus 4. Suppose if your uh, B array starts at 4000, okay, so it should be, uh, it should be, offset should be set as 3996 uh, to refer to the first element, you are adding 4 to this, then, okay, uh, that is how it is being done here. So T4 equal to T1. So the kind of T4 is offset, which is uh, 3996, and the index is, let us say, uh, 4. So if you add, it will become 4000, you are referring the first. Like this, every time, 4 is get gets added, okay, to refer the uh, individual elements of an array, okay. So this is how the 3 address code is generated. So remaining state, uh, statements are quite normal statements, right. So I have the sequence of three address codes generated for that source program and these sequence starts from 1 and ends at 11. You have a statement number 12 also. This 12 indicates the statement that follows the entire uh, source program. Okay. Let us not worry about what is what statement is there uh, in uh, statement number uh, 12. But you, let us indicate 12. Okay. So this 12 statement indicates the statement that follows the entire loop. Okay, now before we perform the loop optimization, we have to identify where is the loop. Okay, so in order to do that, the whole sequence of three address codes are divided into number of uh, basic blocks. Okay, so the sequence of three address codes are partitioned into a, a sequence of basic blocks. So what is basic block? Let me just discuss what is a basic block. As you can see, uh, this is the first step towards a loop optimization. Uh, which is, uh, uh, which uses, uh, where you are going to partition uh, the three address codes into one or more uh, basic block. So the basic block is nothing but it is a sequence of conjugative three address code statements, which may be entered only at the beginning. And when entered, all these statements are executed in sequence without halt or possibility of a branch. If one statement is executed, then the, all the statements of that particular block are executed in sequence without halt or there is a possibility of branch. That means what? Basic block is going to have the sequence of three address codes. Okay, so during the execution, there is only one point, entry point to the basic block. Okay, once you enter into that particular basic block and once you execute the first statement, you have to execute the remaining statements in sequence, okay, without halt or there is a possibility of branch. Okay, so this is what is called as a, a basic block. So the first step is to get the number of basic blocks for a sequence of three address codes. So you have an algorithm to partition the sequence of three address codes into a, a basic block. Okay, <coughs> so this is what is the algorithm that is applied to partition the sequence of three address codes into a basic block. So the first statement is determine the set of leaders. That is the first statement of the basic block. That means what, as I told you, basic block is going to have a sequence of three address codes and there is one statement where, where there is an entry. Okay, once you enter into that, uh, all the statements are executed in sequence without halt or there is a possibility of that. So you have to identify what is the first statement of a, a basic block. That is what is called as a leader. So leader is the first statement of a basic block. Okay, so uh, these are the three rules that you have to apply. The first the rule says the first TAC statement in the intermediate code is a leader. Okay, so this is quite obvious. The first statement in the sequence of three address code is a leader. That means associated with that you are going to get a basic block. Okay, now to get the statements associated with that basic block, to, uh, you have to apply rule number two. So any statement which is target of conditional statement or an unconditional go to statement is a a leader. That means, uh, in order to find the next leader, of course, the first statement is a leader. The next leader is any statement which is the target of a conditional statement is also a leader. Okay, you have to identify where is the conditional statement or where is the unconditional statement. So that statement becomes a, a, a leader for the uh, basic block. Then any statement which immediately follows the conditional go to is a leader. So you also have the statement belowing below the conditional statement. So any statement that statement that follows the conditional statement is also a leader. Okay. So these three rules are applied. Okay. To identify uh, what are the leaders for the uh, basic block. Okay. So as you can see in the uh, example, I have statement number one to twelve. Okay. Since uh, fraud zero is the first statement uh, in the three address code statement, so it is a leader. 
okay next is uh, any statement which is a target of a conditional statement is also a leader okay so statement number 3 is also a leader because it is a target of a conditional statement if i less than equal to 20 okay then a statement that follows the conditional statement is also a leader that is statement number 12 so we don't know what is 12 but 12 is a leader okay so there are three leaders statement number 1 because it is first statement Statement number 3 is a leader because the target of conditional statement. Statement number 12, the statement that follows the if statement is a leader. So, there are 3 leaders and there are 3 basic blocks. Okay. So, once you find the leaders, you will have to now find out uh, what are the statements associated with the basic block. Okay. Just see here, for each leader, construct its basic block which consists of the leader. Okay. So, uh, it is uh, quite obvious that the first uh, statement uh, is a leader, uh, uh, sorry, uh, you are going to include the first statement in the basic block as a leader because it is the initial statement. Okay. Then all the statements up to but not including the next leader. So in the sequence, okay, till you get a next leader, include all the statements in the basic block, okay, excluding the next leader. Understood? So uh, like this, you are going to identify the sequence of three leaders codes for uh, a, a basic block. Okay. Since there are three leaders, Right? Uh, so, have three basic blocks. So, statement number one, statement number two is being included because statement three is a leader. Okay. So, yeah, without including this, okay, you have a set of uh, two statements for basic block B1. So, statement one is a leader. So, statement two is also a, a not a leader, but is a statement, it is a member of basic block. Okay. There are two statements in B1. Okay. So, statement three is again a leader. Statement three is a leader. Now, till 11 till 11 all the statements are belonging to b2 because because the next leader is statement number 12 okay up to but not including in actually you have to consider all the statements uh, as a part of that particular basic block so i have uh, uh, three basic blocks in fact uh, uh, basic block 3 is not uh, included okay because we don't know what are the statements so let us take the statement that are belonging to the basic block b1 and b2 so for b1 you have statement number 1 uh, B, statement number 2 i have uh, sorry uh, for basic block b1 i have two statements statement number 1 and 2 for basic block 2 statement number 3 to 11 right so this is uh, the first step towards loop optimization finding the number of basic blocks okay next <coughs> a flow graph is constructed so this flow, gra flow graph is used to find out the successive relation between the uh, two uh, basic blocks okay so what is the flow graph is a, a directed graph uh, that determines the successive relationship between the basic block here basic block represents the nodes for the flow, flow graph that means whatever the basic blocks you have that becomes a node for the flow graph and one node is distinguished as an initial node so there is one node which is called as uh, an initial node so uh, the basic block that contains the first leader okay he, 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 he will be a an initial node for the flow graph okay so where it is the basic block whose leader is the first statement of course uh, then the edges are obtained as follows okay so the edges will indicate the uh, execution of the basic block the statements uh, statement that are belonging to a particular basic block is going to give the successive relation between the Two base. How, that is, what is the what are the statements of a basic block when they are executed? Suppose if B1 is the first basic block, this is if we, this is going to be executed, then what is the next basic block that is to be executed? Okay. So this is obtained by referring the uh, flow graph. Okay. So here there is a direct edge from the block B1 to B2. If B2 could follow B1, you know that since statement 1 2 is ba basic block 1, statement 3 to 11. So after statement 2 statement 3 is uh, executed and statement 3 is uh, is a statement of basic block b2 it means what b after b1 b2 is executed so you should have an edge from b1 to b2 okay and there is a jump from the last statement of b1 to the first statement of b2 of course a statement number 11 as you can see here from the statement number 11 you have a jump to statement number 3 okay so you should have an edge from b2 to b1 Okay, so here B1 is B2, B2 is B2. You should have an edge from B2 to B1. So first edge is B1 to B2, then B2 to B2. 
okay so this is what is my uh, flow graph this is what is my flow graph uh, with the edges uh, nodes as basic block and now here uh, this is my first basic block which is to be executed next is b2 then again after b2 again b2 is executed after b2 again b2 is executed okay it means that there is a loop in uh, basic block b2 okay so in order to find out this okay uh, what is that is done is you have you are going to check whether a particular graph the flow graph is strongly connected in order to see there is a loop in order to determine where is the loop check for a flow graph whether it is strongly connected if it is strongly connected then there is a graph that means from any node to any node there is a path exist okay so here loop is a collection of nodes in a flow graph which is strongly connected from any node in the loop to any other node there is a path of length one or more wholly within the loop okay so from this we came to know that there is a loop uh, in the basic block b2 okay so after having identified this now let us see uh, how one can apply uh, the first technique okay first technique is code optimization so in code optimization so uh, sorry uh, we let us first uh, apply the first uh, uh, activity or first task uh, that is uh, applying the code motion so here uh, the running time of the program is improved by decreasing the length of one of the loop so in code motion uh, what we are doing is we are going to identify where are the uh, loop invariant computations okay what what do you mean by loop invariant computations you have some computations whose value is not going to change from one iteration to another iteration so this is what is loop <coughs> uh, loop invariant computations and these loop invariant computations are applied and this is what is this technique is called as code motion so this is going to decrease the length of the loop having done this you are going to increase the whole length of the program doesn't matter but you are going to reduce the number of iterations okay so here we assume that the loop is executed at least once and we apply the code motion technique where the important modification is done in the loop where in this process we are going to determine the loop invariant computations and these computations are placed before the loop so as you can see the offset calculations for both array and a and b that is t2 is equal to address of a minus 4 if you just see the uh, statements t2 equal to t2 equal to address of a minus 4 statement number 4 and uh, uh, t4 equal to address of b minus 4 so these two statement number 4 and 6 okay these are uh, uh, the statements uh, belonging to basic block b2 and these are loop invariant computations the value of t2 and t4 is not going to change from one iteration to another iteration. here there are 20 iterations the value is not going to be changed okay so these are identified and they are placed before the loop so before you place the loop you have to uh, have one uh, new basic block and place those invariant computation in the basic block and uh, rewrite the uh, flow graph so this is how it is uh, written this is how it is written okay so i have statement number 4 and 6 are loop invariant computation they are placed before the loop that is between b1 and b2 okay then accordingly flow graph is uh, updated according to the uh, rules in constructing the flow graph okay so this is uh, loop uh, uh, code motion technique the next is uh, identification of uh, induction variable and removing the induction variable so what do you mean by an induction so using the induction variable you are going to reduce the number of instruction that are generated okay so this is another very very important optimization where which is applied for the flow graph which actually decreases the number of instructions and speeds up the uh, execution and reduces the loop iterations uh, uh, and reduces the loop iterations okay so uh, an induction variable is nothing but it is a variable that forms the arithmetic arithmetic progression during the execution understood an induction variable is a variable that forms the arithmetic progression uh, uh, during the execution okay so here if you see the uh, uh, variables i and temporary t1 these two are the induction variable because they form the arithmetic progression that means i is going to vary from i equal to i plus 1 and t1 is going to vary from i equal to uh, that is t1 is going to vary from 
4 into i minus 1. That means uh, T1 is calculated as 4 into i. That means when i equal to 1, T1 equal to 4. When i equal to 2, T1 equal to 8 and so on. So this forms an arithmetic progression. Okay, so i and T1 are uh, induction variables. So in order to remove this, find the relation between uh, the induction variable, the relation between i and T1. So the relation is whenever i equal to i plus 1 is true. Okay, so T1 equal to 4 into i minus 4 is also true. That means when i equal to 1, you have i equal to 2. You also have, when i equal to 0, you have i equal to 1 and T1 equal to 4. So T1 equal to 0. Okay, so like this, uh, when i equal to 1, you have i equal to 2 and uh, uh, T1 equal to 4. That means uh, the value of T1 is ranging from uh, 0, 4, 8, so on up to 76. Every time 4 is added, 20 iteration means from 0 to uh, 76. Okay. So these two variables are called as induction variables. Uh, they have to be removed. Okay. Now after removing induction variable, uh, what you get is one more basic block. Okay, so TM I am going to retain because the value of T1 is varying is going to vary from 0 to 76. So I will initialize to uh, 0 by taking a separate basic block, which is basic block number 4. So T1 equal to 0. Now the value of T1 is every time it is updated by 4. Okay, so I am going to write T1 equal to T1 plus 4. Okay, so I have removed the induction variable R. Okay, I have removed the induction variable i. i was calculated as i equal to i plus 1 and t1 equal to 4 into i. So, i is removed. Now, it is written as t1 equal to 0. So, t1 equal to t1 plus 4. Okay, so t1 equal to 4, first time, the first element is referred. And like that, you are going to iterate uh, 20 number of uh, times. Okay, then you are going to update the index value as a 76 instead of uh, uh, 20 because the value of t1 is going to be updated four times. So the value of t1 is going to vary from 0 to 76, go to beta. Okay, so this is how uh, the induction variable is identified and then it is removed. And the last one is reduction in strength. Last one is reduction in strength. So this is another uh, very, very important uh, component in the loop optimization where the expensive operations are uh, replaced by a cheaper operation. As I already told you, okay, multiplication can be replaced by addition, successive addition, and uh, square root is replaced by an addition. Understood? So uh, you can just think of uh, these uh, uh, examples. Now here in the example, okay, uh, the 4 into i that was replaced, as you can see here, uh, in the diagram, <coughs> so T1 equal to 4 into i, here there is a multiplication involved. Now, during the induction variable uh, removal, we replaced T1 as T1 plus 4. That means the multiplication is an expensive operation, now it is replaced by an addition. So reduction in strength, this is called as reduction in strength which is already been taken care at the time of uh, induction variable. So you have these set of uh, uh, basic blocks, okay, and then uh, every basic block has a certain sequence of trader scores, right? So this is what is called as uh, loop optimization. This is what is called as loop optimization. So in loop optimization, we identified uh, where is the loop? Okay, this is done by uh, you know, finding the partitioning the sequence of trader scores into a sequence of basic blocks. Okay, then a basic uh, then after finding the basic blocks, you are going to construct the flow graph that gives the successive relationship between the uh, basic block. Then you are going to check whether the flow graph is uh, strongly connected. If it is strongly connected, there is a, a, a loop in the uh, graph. So, uh, loop is identified and then after identifying the loop, okay, you are going to perform three types of activities. One is code motion, okay, which is going to reduce the number of instructions. So, here the loop invariant computations are, are identified and they are replaced before the uh, loop, okay. And the next is induction variable, which is again is going to uh, decrease the number of instructions that are used. Okay, the variable that forms the arithmetic progression. So that is removed. Then at the time of removing the induction variable, uh, induction variable, you also have done the reduction step. That is the expense.